Your parents are permanent, like a permanent lesson. And the streets are temporary, you know what I'm saying? No, I'm not doing that anymore. I've got to think about a different strategy. He always said, if you fall into a certain lifestyle, it's like a cycle, you're never going to break out of it. What did he do when he got out? He died in the car with the same people he said he didn't want to hang around with. So there was the danger of, first it was being on the roads. It wasn't about the sentences. When I got the five years, my family were present in court that day. What did you say to yourself that made you take it serious? This is another episode of the Dr. Prince Show. And just for you, I have a special guest, a rapper extraordinaire, C-Biz. Welcome, my brother. What's going on, my brother? Welcome How you to doing? the yes. show. Yes, yes, brother. God bless. How you doing? I want to thank you, first of all, you know, because no, no. we were just chatting, you know. And just you breaking it down about how busy you've been, how much shoots you've had. And um, I know it was easy to be able to say, oh, this shoot's come up, I've got to do this and that. But you didn't. This is important to you. Important. Yeah, I beautiful. To I stick to whatever I see, you know what I'm saying? Excellent, man. So I respect that, bro. Um, as you know, the show is about us just inspiring people, sharing our lives, and um, just enjoying each other's company. Of course, and Just course. having a chat about life. Um, and I think one of the reasons why I was so interested in you because at this moment, you're just flying. Now, I don't know how you're seeing life right now, but I see life where, where, where you're on the runway, you, you, you know, you want, you're putting the grind and you're working hard, you're working hard, but then all of a sudden it gets recognized. Do you know what I'm saying? And whatever it is that you've done, you start to take off now. And it's got the attention, you know, the BBC, the documentary, people yeah. really get you. It's not just underground, yeah. it's mainstream. And that's every, person's dream, I don't care if they're young or old, you want to see your vision take off. Of course you do. Do you know what I'm saying, bro? 100%. So just share with us, we could go from back to front, <laughs> share with us where the vision is right now and, um, you know, how you're feeling about your life right now. I feel, I feel all right. I feel like I'm doing what I've always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because obviously when you first start things, you kind of like, you've got a vision of what you want to do and then sometimes it could get cloudy. Yeah. Some or smoke in the room and that. So sometimes mm -hmm. you have to like open the windows, let everything clear out Go on. to get a good pers perspective of what yeah. you want to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And like as to what I'm doing, I always wanted to make music. Always. I always wanted to make. Yeah. You know, not always. I, I started making music by accident, but okay. Because one of my friends pursued music. You know what I'm saying? He loves music. Music is his heart. Music is his heartbeat. Music mm -hmm. is like his everyday life. But yeah. I just went to the studio with him, tried it out. It's like everyone's typical story. Like you know, like your friend does it the hardest, but okay. you try it and people take a liking to what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And then anyway, X, Y, Z is taken off, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. um, I was going to do music, but incorporate other things with it. Okay. So right now, it's more on an acting thing, like trying to get into making movies and making films and painting. Because I, li I like good films, you know what I'm saying? Nice. It's films that make a statement. Yeah. And all of a sudden, all that's coming to play now. And people are coming to me asking the question, if you want to partake in this, do you want to do this and do you want to do that, but glory to God, we just keep working with it, you know how it goes. Nice, like. nice. So watch out, because he yeah, could look out. be on the acting front. You never, any minute, you never know. Beautiful. Yeah. So that's where the projects have kind of led to yes, at the present yes, moment. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of taking you, do you see how beautiful this is, Seabiz? Because, you know, you could start somewhere, yeah. but we don't know where yeah, life's going to lead you to, No one knows that. You know so imagine if you didn't, take this opportunity and you only had one thing in your head and you didn't know how you're going to get there. Yeah. This is really important. Because yeah, we got, we, us as human beings, we've got this mindset where it's like, no, nah, I'm going to get there this way. Yeah. And then we refuse other opportunities yeah. when those opportunities were actually leading exactly. to that place where exactly. you wanted to go. Yes, because yes. our mind wasn't open enough exactly. to be able to allow ourselves, because you might start as a cleaner job. You could have, you know And because saying? of that, you meet you somebody in the, in the business yeah, that says, you know what? You keep elevating before you know you're working a different role boom, in the place. It's boom. like, either going on the motorway, a straight journey to where you're going, or taking the city route, and then having, having, having to like, 
you're hungry, you might find a shop, do nice. this and do that and keep moving on and on and on. And on. Nice king, nice you know king. Saying? So what was the journey like at the beginning? Because we know that it wasn't like one of those traditions. I've always wanted to be a rapper. Mm. I've always wanted to do this and that. So the journey must have been one that was quite all over the place. It was all over the place. It was Beautiful. Quite, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, take us through but, some of it, man. Well, where do I start? Start, start. Anyway. Start where you're just a youth at home, bro. Oh, and yeah. You're just your I, ends and... Yeah, I was obviously like, I was from, I come from Kilburn, south side of Kilburn, which nice. is South Kilburn, they call it, northwest yeah. London. Like, I've always loved music, listening to music. No, no. From a kid, from school. Mm. I've been in school probably just like rapping lyrics, Nas, yeah, yeah. maybe Jay-Z, you understand? Oh. Notorious B.I.G. and that. Yeah, yeah. The teachers always like, concentrate, start rapping and that. But I never thought about becoming an artist. I just thought, yeah, learn music, music is cool. Nice. And I remember when I came, I was in, I think I just left school. But at that time, when I left school, I, I didn't know how to get to a studio or anything, so I didn't really care about music. And one day, um, two of my guys, two of my boys, Justo and Esty, came back to the area, South Kilburn, mm -hmm. and it was, it was like a mini disc at the time. And they were playing music, and I was, I was like, who's that? And it was both of them. So I was like, well, who made this? And they, 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 they took me for the story, how they made a track, and there was a studio, and there was a guy around the corner from my house and whatnot. So I thought, you know, I'm going to try it out. Well, it blew your mind. Like, yeah, I, was thinking, I listened to the track about, I swear to God, for about maybe like three, four hours, maybe even more. Really? The same tune, I was listening and listening. I'm like, how do you do this? How do you put the word together? You know what I'm saying? How do you do that? How do you do that? He was talking to me, breaking it down. Like, obviously, we've done this, we stopped, we carried on, rah, rah, rah. Nice. And I remember one day, um, Justice set up a studio session. Mm. I went there, I recorded the track. It was obviously it was horrible at the start. Yeah, I yeah. wasn't a good artist. It was just like shouting. <laughs> was it was just, it was just, I don't know. Yeah. And then I think I did another track. Do you laugh when you listen back no, to it now? It's horrible. I wouldn't <laughs> listen to it. <laughs> uh, well, just like maybe like a few months back, we took yeah. like a trip down memory lane, listening to it. Okay. And I was laughing. You must have been. Yeah, I was like, what the hell was, why did you allow me to do this? Like, oh, it was like, but he was just like, oh, it's all right. It sounded good at the time. Yeah. And it was just like, you just practice it, isn't it? Mm. Obviously, I went to jail. Yeah, no, just, my life was going on. I was just practicing music and that. Yeah. And then I ended up in a situation where I went to prison. Okay, so let's go back. Let's move back. Yeah. Let's talk about, because we, especially on this platform, yeah, we love getting into the mind. We want to yeah. understand how the mind works yeah. and decisions that you make and feelings that you have. So what was going on that you believe ended up leading to you going to jail? What was happening from, you know, if you go way back, you might be able to even see from when you was young yeah. how you got to that point. Uh, What's you your know, take when on I it? Start making, when I when I first, the first of the first couple of tracks, it wasn't the right sound, it wasn't the right way. And then I remember um, growing up, listening to like Cash Money, Lil Wayne, Baby, BG and all of that. And there was a specific guy in Cash Money, BG. I used to listen to him all the time and that, yeah. And he made like, he's from New Orleans in America. He made like hardcore rap, gangster rap. So obviously, you know the music you listen to, it influences your lifestyle. He came in a certain way, he was a certain, he liked jewelry, diamond grill in his mouth and all that yeah, kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, so what, he was like my favorite artist at the time. Okay. After listening to the Nas and all them guys, and he became my favorite artist. So I, I stopped not pursuing his lifestyle, but mm -hmm. you become like that guy you listen to, That's he's it. that, you understand? Yeah. So from making music, I'm listening to this guy and I'm like, you know what? I'm that guy. His name was B Jizzle, but he started calling me C Bizzle. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's just like, yeah, this is that. But he, the same way he was, whatever he was doing, on wherever he was, mm. what part of the world, is what I was pursuing as well. Wow. So obviously it was affecting my whole, I couldn't see at the time, my whole lifestyle. Mm. And I thought it was probably going the right way, but in reality it was going the wrong way, you understand? Okay. Well, yeah. tell, us about, tell us about his thought, his mindset. He tell was, us about his style. He was, he was gangster, he was yeah. raw. He was like the most talked about guy in his own mm. set. He was mm. like, BG controlled this. BG was that, BG was this, mm -hmm. and he hung around with the older lot, and I used to hang around with the older guys, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, it was always, he was just like, one of the, he was like a guy that was growing up, but living, all the, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He was moving like, one, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moving with the big guys, moving with Birdman, moving yeah, with like yeah. other people who like, role mm -hmm. models in the area, and that, yeah. that's what I started doing, not because of him, but it was just like, you know what? When he was rapping, it sounded like he was talking about my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yeah, this is me, you know what I'm saying? But wow. 
You know how it so goes. It's powerful yeah. music. Yeah, it's Sometimes powerful. people try to kind of belittle it. Like, yeah. nah, that doesn't really affect no, it does. how, how you it, does. it affected it does. me. It does, it does. Because yeah, every time I put in that CD, whatever yeah. emotions I was going through, whatever happiness I was going through, there was a track to represent the state of mind I was in. Mm. Like, from all these albums, it's like, listen, I'm feeling like. I've got a couple of girls right now, and he's rapping about that. Yeah. And this is me. I could, I could chill with him, yeah. play that music, and yeah. they understand the situation that's going on. Mm. He might be going for some street situation, and there's a track for that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so bro. my whole mindset was in that. Like, yeah. yeah, go get it, get some money, be that guy, and got be you. this. You know what I'm saying? I got you. So did he? Was he like? He wasn't one of them rappers that was clean, business like. Yeah. He was road. He was road, but he started his own. Because he was with Birdman and that, and then he left yeah. him. He was quite rebellious. Mm -hmm. Then he started doing his own thing. Yeah. Like he started his own camp, yeah. Chopper City Boys and that. So I was like, you know what? No, I wasn't like rebellious to whatever, whatever people I was around. Yeah. I was cool with them, but I always told myself, like, I can't just be governed by a, a body of people, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. some way, somehow, I need to elevate and become my own man. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because obviously, I came from a good household. Yeah. I rest peace my father, but he was a good role. He was, he's my nice. role model. You know nice. what I'm saying? And the kind of life he set wasn't like a road life and that. Oh, you know what I'm saying? So every time I went on the road... Your dad's passed. My dad's passed away, yeah, he passed away in 2012. He got killed. Um, How old was you at the time? I was in jail. I was in my 20s, like, yeah, I was like 2012. Wow, was, man. I was like 26 or something. Like, yeah. That, man, yeah, my dad was a good man. He was a good guy. He was doing his thing, you know what I'm saying? But obviously my dad came from, back in the days, he came from Africa and like, moved to England, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, what started his family. Life? Yeah, what a better life his family. He started his family over here. Mm had his kids and all that, but um, he went back to Africa to um, he was building a hotel. Mm. But, Brilliant. You know what I'm saying? But he was alive back in the days with the war and that. Okay. So he took part in the war. What part of Africa? Uh, he's originally from Niger, but people say Niger, but he moved to Nigeria, if you know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Because he's a neighboring, neighboring um, country and that. Okay. But um, cut a long story short, you know how they say you live by the gun, you die by the gun. Mm. Who knows what he's done in his past? He took part in the war. You never know you. what. Yeah, what went down. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. He wouldn't explain to us. I was a kid when it happened. I wasn't really? even a kid. I wasn't even born because he was a kid. Yeah. But anyway, he moved, came to London, England mm -hmm. sometime in his life. I, I wasn't born. I wouldn't know. But yeah. obviously, he met my mum, XYZ. He had us. But then in 2012, he went back. He was building a hotel. And apparently, some guys came in. But I was in jail at the time. Because okay. I messed up and got myself in some stupid situation, but yeah. some guys came in there to the hotel, it was like... And I, I just didn't try to kidnap him, I think they tried to kidnap him or something, mm -hmm. or hold him for ransom for money, mm -hmm. and they shot him. But in them countries, that they don't use pistols, or they come with like, you know what I'm saying, big... Big, big guns. guns. You know, big guns, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they killed, they shot him, and demanded some money and that. But by the time they demanded the money, it was a bit too... Too late. He had passed already. Wow. But they were still trying to retrieve some money, but they couldn't get it. And mm. anyway, I was in prison. By the time I got a, a message, it was too late. He had died already and X, Y, Z. So what was your relationship like with your dad and how did that affect you? Uh, um, my relationship, I was like my, of all my dad's kids, my dad's got like loads of kids, you know what I'm saying? But of all of them, I was like one of the only people that actually asked my dad questions. I hear yeah, you. so I'd ask him if something was wrong. Or if someone done something wrong and he, he got angry by it, I asked him why he got angry. Like how he'd come and get me sometimes, yeah? And have me in the car, we're just driving. And he's, he, he, was, he was legit. But he was legit doing what he was doing. Like my, I never came from home like a father where, this is why I, I never really thought I'm gonna be with guys on the streets. Cause the guys on the streets probably drove like maybe Fords or VWs and that. And they were doing whatever they were doing, you know what I'm saying? My dad was a legitimate guy and he had, numerous amount of cars, mm -hmm. numerous amount of houses, all legit. So I always thought to myself, this guy on the street making noise, not doing nothing with himself, mm -hmm. probably drives a one little Mercedes and he thinks he's the he's bad guy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I've got a dad that goes and does whatever he needs to do. He wears a suit 24 seven, has about five cars and outside one house, you know what I'm saying? He's got houses across the road from each other. So you're out here making noise, and you're not doing nothing. And I've got the main role model at home. That's Showing me so a different perspective. You know what I'm saying? Me Coming a from the ends, yeah. having that as your you dad. Know what I'm saying? But yeah, but the reason I end up in the ends is because my dad, my school was in Kilburn, and we used to travel from um, 
Cricklewood, my dad had a house in Cricklewood, yeah. Golders Green, Hendings. So sometimes I come back from school and I go there, but it was always a bus journey back and forth. So you thought, you know what? He bought a house in Kilburn just for us to go to school. So my school was now like two minutes up the road. I had to walk okay. instead of going on a bus and X, Y, and Z. But what he didn't realize, where he bought the house was a crazy estate behind it. Yeah. And he put the house, obviously he didn't put the house, the house is built there. Like, yes, yeah, you're going to school. This is where you're going. But he hasn't realized what's behind that. There you go. That's where all the guys, when I come up from school, everyone's going back there. I'm going back to the block and seeing what's happening. What's going on? So, as so a, was that your entry into that, really yes, the roads? Yes, that, I'm interested in what's mindset. going on over there. I'm coming back from school. You want me to come straight home, but after school, the girls are going there, the guys are going there. Got you. Everything's going on over there. Now how old are you? What now? No, how old are you? How when was that's I? Going on? I was in school. I was, I was, you're young, you're a teenager. 12, 13, yeah, 13, 14. Yeah, 12, 13, 14, okay. and all that. I come out from school, 14, 13, well, yeah. 13, 14, I couldn't really like go out. You can play out, but okay. you couldn't really hang out. You know what I'm saying? But when I, when I hit like 14, 15, you're like year 9, 10, you know what I'm saying? Going on to year 11 and all yeah. that, you can do whatever you want. So you started staying about year, out more? Yeah, staying out more. From about year 9, I was staying out. Did mum, did mum, was mum all right with that? Course, no, 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 they weren't. She I get in trouble. It. They were not, not at all. Gotcha. Like, when you come back, obviously everyone's got, you know how it is when you're young? Yeah. You go out, you come back, there's an excuse, oh, something yeah. happened. I lost this, I lost yeah, that, yeah. I couldn't find my way. Back of lies. You know what I'm saying? But you, you get in trouble, but when I hit 15, I think I hit the mark where it's like, I'm a man now. You know what I'm saying? Cause I was my mum's first boy for my dad. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I've got other brothers and that. Yeah. I still got brothers, but I'm my mum's first boy for my dad. So obviously, she's going to worry about where I'm going and what I'm doing. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? But she can't understand that I'm a guy. I'm a boy. I'm a man. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So she can only talk to my sisters and have them a certain way. But she's not a man to control a man. She needs my dad to tell me what to do now. My dad always got mad about don't be this and don't be that because he always said if you um if you fall into a certain lifestyle, mm. it's like a cycle, you're never gonna break out of it. Like gotcha. if the police get hold of you, if you end up making a mistake and the police grab hold of you, that's it. Your dad used to tell me. He used you to this. tell me, he said, listen, know what you're doing, you're gonna be in a loophole, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna keep going round and round and round and round. School, school, school the, the viewers on like what keeps a you doing what he's doing when he's got good advice, he's got a good, good parents. It's, you know what? If, especially if kids listen, happen to listen to this year, mm. your parents are permanent, like a permanent lesson, and the streets are temporary, you know what I'm saying? So you're going to find people on the streets, yeah? Yeah. That's going to like influence you to do certain things. Yeah that's only valid for a certain age or certain time of life, time in your life, actually. Yeah. So, like, you might have friends that want to take you out and hang out and do stupidness. It's only going to be beneficial for that time. Mm -hmm. But your parents have seen, this is hindsight, they're giving you a vision that, listen, this is the future. We've made it to this time to have you and bring you up so you can follow our steps or avoid our mistakes, you know what I'm saying? But when you're growing up, you don't. it doesn't sound like a message coming from an older person sounds like, oh, he's just bored, he's tired, he's just moaning. My dad said, tell me, what are you doing? Like, I remember he used to come and get me, and he's going car drives and just has a chat. And I'm going to one of these houses I've never seen before, and I'm driving to Arnold's Grove, and there's a house there that nobody even knows, but I'm in the house with him. He's telling me it's his, I'm like, okay. But he's trying to, he's, he was always trying to um, advise me that like, you need to do things like this. But then when I go back to the area, I'm like, chilling in the area, in the hood with the boys, they're smoking weed, there's girls about, entertaining for the time being, you know what I'm saying? Wow, yeah. They're not, nobody in the area is saying to me, no one in Kilburn mm -hmm. and South Kilburn is saying, well, we need to save up for a mortgage or we need to save up to buy a house or save up to do something important in life. Yeah. They're thinking about everything that's temporary, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So then... No one's got a vision. No one's got a good vision. They might have a vision, but it's not beneficial or substantial to what what you're gonna do you, in life or what you wanna do in life. And, and, and you, wasn't, you wasn't transferring what you'd learned, because you were quite rare. Yeah. Not everybody had that influence from no, their no, dad. No, not everybody. You know, a lot of guys, that's just the way it is, isn't it? Yeah, it's true. Probably that's they had daddy issues. Like, yeah. Where's dad? Yeah, that's, around. that's correct, 100%. Yeah. Those are people, those are my friends who probably have like, dad, no mum, mum, no dad. That's and it. if they have a dad, no mum, it's quite rare. Yeah, it's I hear basically you. Basically, mum, no dad, or like, mm. have to go to dad's house and That's X, it. Y, and Z. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but, and, and, and how come, have you ever thought about this? Why didn't I share 
the stuff my dad was giving me, or you hadn't it? Friends. Yeah, hadn't it really sunk in yet that what this guy has given me the keys to life? Because you know when you're young, sometimes you don't quite get it yeah. that you're getting that. Was it that? But you couldn't. You couldn't. When you're young, you, know, you can't bring that to people because that's not it. That's not what's it. That's not the end thing. People are chilling out. People are having fun. People are doing things. People are trying to like, you're trying to have fun now. Yeah. You don't want to tell your friend, oh, well, you can't hang around after eight o'clock because you've got to go indoors. I sound like a teacher. You've got to be what your environment. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Come on, this, is, this was killed and it was blighting with all sorts of stuff. Yeah. There was like, I could say there was gangsters. There was like yardies. There was yeah. everybody there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But what I've definitely done in Kilburn, whether people like it or not, they admit it or not, is that I wasn't like a block guy. Like, I'll come. I remember I got my car. Everyone, people were buying cars and whatnot when I was young. Yeah, you know how it was, like. But when I got my car, or before, before I got the car, mm. I wasn't stationary in, like, a one spot. I was the guy from the area that, like, would go to other areas and even further out of London okay. and explore other stuff and come back to the area and tell them this is what happens. Like, you need to try and get off the block. Yeah. Like, I'll take some of my friends and just drive to another area. Yeah to meet other people. Yes, so yeah. I'm getting different perception or different perspective yeah. of life and how other people see life, you know what I'm saying? Nice. And what's going on. Yeah. And then so on and so forth. Do you think that made you a little bit wiser? Yeah, 100%. Even just from, from travelling? Yeah, yeah, 100%. And it weren't even to another country? No, it was a country. Just, just going from, to... Yeah, just going from here to there. Mm -hmm. Even if I had to go leave the area to just go somewhere else to find girls, because mm. coming when I was a kid, like, what more can I look for? Yeah. Or, I had to make money in that. Because obviously as a child, I don't want to start confessing to certain things, but whether it was good or bad, when I was young, I wanted like a PlayStation. Mm -hmm. I wanted a PlayStation 2 when it got out. Yeah. My older brother got one. Mm -hmm. And then I thought to myself, I need one. I'm not going to wait for my dad to buy me one. I'm going to go get it myself. Did you ask him? I didn't ask, because the full prior to that, he's bought like a Dreamcast and Nintendo yeah. 64. And okay. So I saw myself as like, you know what? You need to try and get yourself. So whatever I had to do to try and get, even the latest phone or the latest trainers or whatever mm. it was, I made myself like go somewhere, somehow, find the money. And the money wasn't in the house and it wasn't in Kilburn. It was like, go somewhere else, okay. do something, somewhere, somehow. I'm not going to get into it, but yeah. somewhere, somehow, come back with the own product. You know okay, so this is good because then, then break it down. Why, when we're young, the ideas, the only ideas that come into our head to do things are criminally, do you know what I'm saying, minded? Yeah, yeah, criminal mind, because you think to yourself, yeah, you're too young to probably like, um, you're too young to like, anyone to believe your story, I don't know. I don't know. See, this is how real this yeah, is, I like, know. yeah. I, is it good to talk about what, what Bro, I don't Please, yeah, like, just be just, real. Just, just for is... example, when I was young, yeah, there were like some Arab kids in school. Yeah. That, 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 that parent, parents gave them money. Mm -hmm. Obviously, my dad always catered for us. He gave me money, you know what I'm saying, yeah? yeah? But these guys always played, because back then it was like games on the PC and whatnot. Mm -hmm. okay. And then we had shops like W. H. Smith, uh, the Woolworths and the V Shop and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I'd go out with my friends and that. And we asked them what games they like. Because these kids are probably going to spend like £40 in the game, really and truly. Yeah. But then we but some way, somehow, get the games for them mm -hmm. and sell like at £15. So who's not going to buy that? It's £40 in the shop. That's you know it. what I'm saying? And of someone's course. coming to your school, bringing it to you yeah. for 15 quid. Of course you're going to buy that. Yeah, you're so the hustle that. was, yeah. we'll get yes, those we'll get products that. for yeah. free yes. and make, we'll make some pee yeah. off so that product. We'll yes, we'll make the money and we keep, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Saving, saving. You know, mm -hmm. It was easy to save back then because responsibilities wasn't a lot. Yeah, that's you right. You make some money, you just leave that under your mattress. Yeah somewhere under your shoes or something, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's rubbish money, isn't it? But to yeah. me, it was big money, so I saved up my money, bought my PlayStation, I was happy then, buying my phones and just doing what I was doing, buying trainers. And, and then, you never realised that you were in business at the time? I didn't know that was a hustle mentality. I just you thought, was a businessman. I, I didn't know that. You just needed to change the way the you way went about doing. getting your yes. products to yeah. be able to yeah. sell. Yeah, exactly. But, and until one day, I remember one day, um, I was going to go out with my boys and that, but then I thought, nah, because I remember I had a chat with my dad, he was just like, you need to know what you're doing, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, because... Mm. And I stayed at home. Straight after school, I went home. And then the boys went out, and then they got caught by the security guard, and the security guard called the police. And the police called their parents. 
And they got beat for that, so I said to myself, you know, thank God I wasn't involved in that. Wow. And that was the end so, of it. I thought, no, nah, I'm not doing that anymore. I've got to think about a different strategy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To, like, okay. Try and get money some way, somehow. Yeah. Like, so you didn't want that smoke? No, nah, I didn't want that smoke. Listen, I, to my dad thought, listen, my dad, my dad thought, like, I was an example like to all these friends that are oh, my kid that you know what I'm saying? I hear you. you know what I'm saying? And you was aware of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. didn't want to let him down. No, 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 no. he called he had a name for me that 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 um he used to call me the world champion. You know what I'm saying? He called me yeah. the world champion. So every Love time your dad every, already. Yeah, so every time he explained to his friends, I was like the kid that if something was wrong with the VCR, I'll fix it. If something was wrong with the TV, I'll fix it. If something wow. was wrong with something, for some reason my mind's like, okay, it's not that. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And it, it wasn't like I got practice or anything from anywhere else or that. You just had something yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah, something's you like, you know what, so. that's wrong with it. It's not coming out clear. It must be this, it must be that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So he always said to me, oh, go college and go university and that. But these times I was just like primary school, secondary school, you know what I'm saying, when these things was happening. Mm. So he always had like a, he was always trying to push me, like, go uni and do what you want to yeah. do, you know what I'm saying? But you just didn't get there. Nah, I, 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 into when, that. I, when I left school and that, I, I, I was already gone. Yeah. I was hanging around with guys that are older than me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm like 16, 17, getting introduced to guys that are like 24. They're moving they're food. Doing, they're doing what they're doing, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. But then I've got a car, I'm driving to college. And when I'm driving to college, yeah, I'm hanging around with these guys. So I'm pulling up to my college like, hold on one second, I need to do something. And I'm going to college, all from Kilburn to like West London and that. The guy's in the car and he's phoning my phone, what are you doing? But I'm in college trying to learn for like a quick hour of the day, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whatever we're doing, I've gone to the college, I yeah. parked this my car, yeah. so I'm outside, so they're in my car, you know what I'm saying? He's calling my phone, what are you doing? I said, one second, I'm doing something, I'm doing something, but I'm actually in class, still trying to learn, you know what I'm saying? Okay. But I've got to distract. One part of my mind is trying to focus, oh, yeah. the other part is getting distracted so by it, pulled. pulled back, you know what I'm saying? So I've, I've done like one one lesson in, in college, which is, well, I should have been there for like three lessons, you know what I'm saying? One lesson, and I'm like, you know what, I've had enough, I've learned enough. Back in the car, back to the roads, wherever I'm, you know what I'm saying? But back in my mind, is like, get it right. And my dad's like, how are you doing? And I'm like, yeah, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, you know what I'm saying? What are you doing? Okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm, okay. I've got a story for him. Like, yeah, my life is going well. Mm. Then he's asking, how are you affording these things? I'm like, yeah, I'm working, I work. You know, so I've got, oh, I've got, I start, I start telling lies, you know what I'm saying? But Did you have a conscience about it at the time, or did that conscience come later? Later, you know, sometimes later. you feel like, ah, oh, it's minor. I just tell Dad whatever yeah, to keep him off. Yeah, later. Okay. I think it will hit me maybe like way down the line. Mm. Very, very late down the line when I have time okay. to reflect because you're on the road, every day is another like a uh, right. hurdle. It's like back to back, you know what I'm saying? You're on the road, you're not thinking, oh, let me take today and think about my life. No, I'm young. I ain't got no responsibilities. All I have to think about is making money, getting it right, have nice clothes get nice girls and have money, you know what I'm saying? That was it. Let's think about where did that even come from? Because break this, let me, let me break this down, see this, yeah? Mm -hmm. We're at school, mm -hmm. our parents are clothing us, mm -hmm. our parents are feeding us, yeah. and all they want from us the best. is to get some knowledge yeah. so we can now take all what they've given us and move on to doing what we're yeah. supposed to do yeah. to make our money, have our house, and do what we're doing. Yeah. But all of a sudden we hit a certain age and the need and want to have money to start dealing with girl becomes so strong yeah. that that plan that was the good plan, we throw it out the window. I know, but I can say that my, my father was leading me to the right, down the right path, but at the same time I'm from a polygamous family. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. My dad has different, he had like a few different women. women. So kids, different kids, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Not different kids, sorry. Different women with kids, you know what I'm saying? But right. he was always, the, my family, we're all family. Like, I yeah. can't, I don't look at my half brother and say, oh, you're my half. Same I don't know about that. Yeah. You're my brother, that's yeah. it. We don't know any different because the kids were in the same house. We wore the same clothes and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So maybe those are things that I inherited mm -hmm. without knowing or subconsciously accepting without realizing. Like, this is life. Yeah, this is life, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, the money part, my, like I said, my dad had cars. Like, I remember used to drive past my school sometimes. It might be in a Burgundy Mercedes E-Class today. I'm talking about back in the 90s, the two, early 2000s and that. Like, I'm seeing my friend's dad's pull up in maybe like a Vauxhall or That's like a, a broken down car. Yeah, or, yeah. But my dad just drives past in a Mercedes Jeep. Mm. He sees me outside with my friends. What are you doing? You're right. Have you not got money? Here's 50 quid, you know what I'm saying? 
these guys are t bringing a pound, pound coin to school. My dad's giving me 50 pounds to split with like four guys. But I've probably still got money from leftovers. I'm giving that, I'll give them like the 10 pound in my pocket and I'm keeping the 50 pound for myself. So I was telling me, my dad said, split this. They running off and getting excited, but the real money's in my pocket. You know wow, what I'm saying? I so you. these kind of things where um, I'm so, things that I've just seen and just thought, you oh, know, you what, feel this like is, the yeah, man, yeah, even yeah. through little you know things saying? like that. You know what I'm saying? So then, yeah. If I if I if I thought, yeah, I need money, it's because I saw my family, I saw my my parent do that. Mm. So I always thought to myself, I want to be like my dad, but I never really asked him, ah, oh, what did you do? Wow, I, that's you know amazing, you know, because you, do, thought, you would think, you'd say, okay, dad, bring me in. Nah. I'm I older now. Yeah, I, I wish you could have, but I had an older brother, you know what I'm saying? I'm like my dad's f third um, boy. Yeah. So I've got okay. an older brother and one after him and me. And what are they doing? My older brother was like, my dad, he's like a junior to my dad, so my dad gave him everything. But for some reason, my dad loved me. Obviously, he loved all his kids, but of course. he's always called me this and that. But he's never really said to me, this is what you're going to do, or this is yours. But for my older brother, I know, I don't know if, if you might see and get maybe a bit upset, but I feel like my dad gave him more. No, you're just sharing yeah, your view as a sibling. Him more and yeah. the next brother more. Okay. Like, my, the brother after my old, the first boy mm -hmm. went to a private um, college in that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I just went to a college up the road. Okay. I went to a school up the road. He went to, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah, like, yeah, I feel you. He, you're paying for these, bread, for these guys' uh, education that. Mm -hmm. But mine, I'm just like, yeah, because it is different from yeah. general public school yeah. to private yeah. school, so, isn't it? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I'm yeah. thinking that, do you, not do you love me, but you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah. How come do you invest in all these guys? And, not and you're aware of this yeah, as a teenager, I'm, yeah? yeah? I'm like, obviously, you're investing in them, not me, mm. but you're giving me money to probably go to school in that. Mm. But you're giving like maybe £50 every week or like maybe £100 here, to, you know what I'm saying? But okay. you're paying thousands of pounds for him to go learn in that. So what I'm hearing is that you feel like your dad's giving you a fish for the day. Here's 50 pounds, here's some, here's some money for your boys. But with your, with your other brother, he's teaching him how to fish. Yes, you know what I'm saying? So he can yeah. make that yes. pee and keep that going. Yes. But he's not teaching you how to how fish. To fish, yeah. But obviously, later on in life, I kind of I understood that he thought I was smarter. And I don't want him to watch him think I was right. But yeah. even my mum said it to me. She goes, she, she, she kind of dealt with me the same way as well. Like she showed like the rest of her kids that more, like, more love. And with me, she was harsh. But then one time I had a conversation with her, like, maybe, like, last year. Mm -hmm. And I said, why did you always treat me like that? She goes, because I always thought, like, you was, like, stronger than everyone else. And you knew you had to fend, because sometimes you get money and you won't go spend it, you bring it to me. And I was thinking, well, wow, but I was thinking, that like, isn't that what you're supposed to do? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's my mum, I thought, like, I'm meant to look after you regardless, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But then she kind of broke it down to me. So I, I obviously now understand that obviously it wasn't hate, it wasn't the parents, it's because your dad called you world champion, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they're thinking you're that guy, mm -hmm. you're that kid. But and obviously, that perception you, know you didn't saying? get at yes. the time. And I've got a brother who's similar to me as well. Yeah. He always thought he was getting harsh love and that tough love, but it weren't because he's, he's kind of like similar to me, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And he's like one of the people where like if someone's going to home, People either come to me or him. Mm. And he's well younger than a lot of people, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's just the way it goes. Bro, I'm really like interested in like just that whole mindset of having mm. this dad that's true. That, that had this dude, the, the car, and yeah. he, he, he had a vision and he worked he did. towards he did. He did. it. He, did. he was a massive role model to you. He was. And, he was. and you had P on you, and just it seems like it's difficult than what people think to evade the streets I know. And, and 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 like for me i call it like for my, my bridging done a book um robin um travis done okay. prisoner to the streets okay and it's like it holds you prisoner it does to the yes, streets it does. once you kind of buy into it, it. what do you does. think about that series? of course it does what the streets yeah of course it does holds you prison like it steals it hostage. your potential it steals your potential and you don't realize what you could actually accomplish but you know what helped, yeah? It was a bad thing, it was a good thing at the same time. Yeah. I ended up, obviously, I was, I, I was getting into trouble here and there, but it was just like little minor ones where I was getting off, slapping the wrist, X, Y, Z, but keeping it quiet. Then I got into major trouble when I had to go to jail. So I had to go to jail, and I got a five-year sentence. And then I went back to court because I had a pending case. Stop. How does that feel when you hear five years? When I had five years judge. from the judge, 
obviously, my, this is the part that, it, it wasn't about the sentence, it when I got the five years, my family were present in court that day. And people were crying and people were like, oh no, well no, but to me, I thought, you know what, five years, from what I've been doing, five years, okay. It's all right. You actually balanced yeah, it balance out. Yeah, balanced it out. You know what, what you've been yeah. getting away yeah, with. Yeah, yeah, I got away with this. So five years for all this punishment. You know what's all right. But when I went back, because I'd done six months on remand. So I thought, yeah, two years, I'll be out in two. Then I had a case that was pending, which I should have got off anyway. But then the five-year sentence was similar to the other case. It was like, you know what? You can't tell me this is an accident because you've got back-to-back -back cases saying this and saying that. So you have to be that person, you know what I'm saying? And now the judge is rounding off my sentence to a six-year sentence, you know what I'm saying? So when I've got that sentence, when I've got the five years, mm. when I've done six months, I went back to um, jail after yeah. getting sentenced. The first night I went to sleep and woke up, and in the morning I said to myself, you know what, I had learnt my lesson that that six months was enough to learn that I messed up. Wow. You know what I'm saying? It was Serious. enough for me that, like, you know what I'm saying? So mm. I, I chilled out and then, Six months from remand, everyone thinks you're coming home. This is how the street goes. All your friends are still your friends, you know what I'm saying? Mm. They've got, in, is there, there's something in their head saying, yeah, you might come home, so everyone's nice to you, everyone's mm. talking to you. Mm. When you get sentenced and there's a length, and everyone knows this is how long you've got to be in there, mm. people start to fade away in that. Oh, you know what I'm saying? This is real, this is real life, because yeah. you might have a girl that you're talking to every night. Mm. She thinks you're coming home. Oh, well, you're case in six months. When she realizes you've got five month, five years, She's thinking, I'm not waiting around for that. She might start answering the phone to you. Mm. You might ask your boy for something. He might stop, he might not do it, he might take time. In his head, he's thinking, well, you got long, you ain't got, what's the rush? Mm. You know what I'm saying? So you start fending for yourself. And then, when I got to six years now, I thought to myself, all right, cool. I went to a jail in uh, North, Northampton. What, what was, kind of things are going through your head, bro? Yeah, you just, it's just, I think I still got I'm st I still got PTSD from all that stuff, but Tell you have you, to man. come one with yourself to admit it. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Because baby. you're being locked up in a yeah. Because you know what, have, have you ever, yeah. being man's going on like yeah, yeah. What? No, everyone's lying. Like like, it doesn't matter. You go lying, to it, bro. listen. If you leave your dog in a cage in, in your house, yeah. Remember, in a beautiful house, mm. you put a dog in a cage. Yeah. After a few hours, the dog starts to go mad. Mm. He's banging, barking, he's crying. Now you leave someone in a prison cell yeah. for 23 hours for years. Do you think you, you, you might even have a conversation with yourself? You know what I'm saying? You might start, it. It's weird. You might just start playing music and you're vibing yeah. with your own self. Mm -hmm. You get to know yourself. You think you might even. Some, sometimes you feel like you're losing yourself. Like, wait, wait, am I alright? Because you can't you. wait to get let out. So when you, you see a dog getting let out of the cage and just shooting out the house, you're like, hey, come here, come here. You don't know what the dog's thinking. Mm -hmm. Now, leaving a human being in a cell. Some maybe some six by four, six by six, some little cell. You can probably stretch your arm and your leg and touch wall to wall. You know what I'm saying? Horrible, Seriously. terrible, single. It's all terrible. But you you get to um, you get to think and like, what, what's the right word? Reflect on your whole life where you went wrong and what you should have done. You know what I'm saying? Tell me about that. As you reflected over the, the years, what did you end up doing? So what, what, I, what I reflected on, remember I told you I was doing a bit of music. It wasn't serious. Yeah. I never ever took it professional, never ever took it seriously. Yeah. And then I thought to myself, you know what, yeah? Cause when I was in jail, I was getting these little DVDs with like rappers and music start to, started to blow. Like, nice. Urban music was always blown, but yeah. it was become, having to like hear and see people mm -hmm. on TV yeah. and hear people that on the radio, mm. BBC One Extra, BBC Radio One, like I've actually come in contact with these people in real life. Yeah. Now I'm hearing the tune on the radio, I'm seeing them in places, I'm watching these little DVDs and seeing people doing things, I'm like, I could do that. Because I feel like I've got, not even a better story, but I've got a better mindset to doing what they're doing. Gotcha. Anyway, during that six year sentence, I happened to go to um, open prison, it's a DCAT they call it, yeah. Okay. And then the first chance I got, I went out, when I came out of jail, I went out to this club, met my friend XYZ was speaking, told me we could do videos and that, you know what I'm saying? But back then, before I went to prison, I didn't know who could make music videos, I didn't know who could, um, there was just every, limited sources to everything I wanted to do. When I come out, the, 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 the guy who records the videos here, like, he, this is how you do it, this is how you do it, I shot a music video and I thought, you know, I'm gonna take music serious, a bit serious. I've done a video, got a good response, got well, loads of views and all that. Mm. When that time I went back to prison, because it was like a three, four day um, 
home leave. By the time I go back to prison, people were talking about it. Oh, you got a sick video of Robert Rise, the banging tunes called We Get In. I don't know a few people in the area, K Cole, Justice, and um, ST, and Tex, like people from my area, and that. Nice. They kind of had like recognition anyway, so yeah. the video kind of like put me on the pedestal. I was like, oh, yeah, you're yeah. going somewhere with it. So they're already riding, yes. jumped on that jumped on the, Yes, we're Boom. going, we're going, Beautiful. we're good. People are talking about it. this guy, you know what I'm saying? Mm, Cowboy, like CJ is doing his thing, XYZ. Like then um, what happens next? Obviously, I'm going back and forth from jail. Mm. And then, are you are you doing are you doing your time tidily? No, because you know certain men they go inside but, and it's just one trouble you know, after you another, know what, one yeah. fight kicking off. How was your time? My first time in prison, yeah, it's like I've come from the rules, and I wasn't like a pushover. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when I'm in there, I don't care who you are. I'm meeting all these guys that people talk about. You might have heard the name from the streets and that, but. I was hanging around with, even when I went to prison, yeah, mm. I was like, I went to Big Man Joe at 21. Mm. That was like my first prison sentence. Mm. I'm with all these big guys and they shipped me to like Wellingborough. And I'm on the wing with like grown folks. Well, I was in, well, first I was on the wing with like people my age and mm. just a bit older and whatnot. But it's just like the SO, the senior officer on the wing was yeah. always calling me downstairs for some form of problem. Like, you done this, you done that. But I wasn't realising this. I was thinking, bro, but I'm just chilling out. Mm -hmm. He tried to do that, so of course I have to mash him up. Yeah. That's what I thought it was. You know what I'm saying? Now? Gotcha. You're not going to take me for a punk. You're not going to take my stuff. Like, mm -hmm. I remember I went to my first, um, my first review for Cat D, but I didn't know what that was. So yeah. I went there with like maybe like a, a half ounce of weed in my pocket. Mm -hmm. And I sat in front of the governor of the jail. But because I was like... I came from the, I was on the roads, like, I didn't care about police, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I cared about them, but it's like, the police are like, the, the bad guys. That's it, they're the enemy. Yeah, yeah the enemy. That's, so, how that, that's how they see If you're not the police, you're not no, nobody, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I sat in front of the, um, the, pres the governor, I don't know if she remembers it or whatnot, but I went there and she said to me, ah, you stink of weed. But I said to her, no, nah, I don't. And I'm saying, the weed's in my pocket, I can see it, I know she can see it. But she's like, I, I, I don't know, she goes, you smoke? I said, no, nope. you do this, no. Nope. She goes, you want to go open prison? I said, yeah. But I, did, I was saying yes, because I thought it sounded right. She goes, you want to go home? I said, yeah, of course I want to go home. She goes, you need to try and stop smoking. I'm like, I don't smoke. She goes, but you stink of cannabis. <laughs> I'm laughing to myself here. Yeah. I was in my head like, what's she talking about? She goes, all right, this is what we're going to do. We're going to put you on a um, VDT, voluntary drug testing um, course, yeah? So you got to get piss tested, yeah? Every, like, I think twice a month, or I think it was once a month or twice a month, something like that, mm -hmm. to get open um, release and that. I'm thinking in my head, like, I don't care about open release, forget all that. I told them, forget that. Like, I'm in jail anyway, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I've got weed on me, I've got a phone. I don't care about nothing else, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't care about, I didn't care about nothing. I wasn't that like, stupid, I was smart with it, because I wasn't getting caught with it. Yeah. But it was just like, I don't care about this, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, I'll do my sentence, because I, I already got my, my side, I had a six year sentence. So I just went to this jail with like grown men in there, you know what I'm saying? People raid from the 30s and doing life sentences and whatnot. Mm. So I started, I got like a, I got on a course. Um, it was like industrial cleaners because I was always causing not problems on the landing, but they always knew like listen, everyone's always outside your door. You're always doing something. You know what I'm saying? Obviously there's other people doing stuff, but it's like you bring more heat to yourself than anything else. So um, there was a good officer on the landing said to me, go and work in the, um, industrial with the industrial cleaners lot. They go around the jail and they get, get it's like you kind of like liaise with like the lifers and that. So I start to I'm chat to a few lifers and that. People done mad crimes and whatnot and they weren't coming home. And they kept saying to me, you got a chance of going home, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. We were grown men, like white guys, black guys, and just, mm -hmm. they, oh, you know, they just talk to you, they just like you for some reason. I was like, yeah. I did well me. I was like, all right, cool. And um, one of them was like, listen, you need to try and go home. Like, then he explained to me what Cat B was. He was working towards that. So he, he had about, he had a life sentence. He had done about 25 years in jail. Wow. And he was working for his cat D after 25 years. But I just done about a year of my sentence and I had the opportunity to get that. And I just like threw it out the window. He's saying to me, look, I've been working for this for 25 years. And you didn't realize that. And I didn't realize that was gold, you know what I'm saying? So as soon as he told me X, Y, Z, wow. I thought, you know what, yeah? I went back and signed up for them VDT and whatever way I could swindle to pass and that. Got, kept doing that. Obviously, yeah. I want, I want, I want out now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But we had to find another way without. You know still, what I'm saying? We're but, still bunning. You know what I'm saying? I'm still you know passing the test. Yeah. <laughs> I can, instead of living loud and mad. Yeah. 
Don't break the rules, bend the rules, you know what I'm saying? Take it down. Take it easy, be easy, yeah, Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, don't be seen. Yeah, and and, and they've they've kicked me off the wing I was on because some madness happened on the wing and obviously who they're going to come for? Someone's got his head all stabbing in his head and whatnot. Apparently they said it was me, but it wasn't even me, you know what I'm saying? And they were trying to press charges for the police. And I I remember one officer came to my cell, I was down the block and said to me, you could get up to 25 years. For that? Yeah. I was speaking to the officer, I was saying to him, it weren't me, it weren't me, like, Please, like, you know what I'm saying, try to do something, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. For some reason, the guy who was going to press charges, like, let it go. Yeah. But I thought, you know what, this is, I got life again. Like, this is, I'm, I'm lucky, like, you know what I'm saying? So they moved me off that wing. So you could have gone in for six and yeah, then and, and, not coming and up, out. Not coming out, you know what I'm saying? So I, I moved on to a wing, like, with my, um, some other guys from South London and that. But they'd been in jail for long. That's my guy, Yanks, and um, a few other people. Mm-hmm. Some guys from North London and whatnot. Yeah. But they, for some reason, obviously they were like grown, they were, they were older than me. At this time I was about, what, 22, 23 now? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm lying, I was about 22 now. Yeah. Going on to 23 now, you know what I'm saying? They were always saying to me, oh, listen, just try and get out of jail, man. Don't waste your life in jail, you know what I'm saying? Rah, rah, rah. Mm-hmm. And they're just like, oh, you know when you get older brothers in jail? It's like, just do this, do that. And then I just thought, you know what? I just need out of there. And then music, I just thought to myself, music is only escape. I came out, done music, it went all right. Got my cat D, kept doing what I was doing, blah, blah, blah. Got in problems again in jail whilst I was in DCAT. Got into problems again. A DCAT. A DCAT from the road. So the police had come, they put it back to a closed condition again. And I thought to myself, nah, this is long, you know what I'm saying? Came out of 2004, I'm going to stick to music. This is like 2000, came out 2010. Yeah. And then when the police came to me, because something happened to somebody else. So I was out for about two days in that. I was out over the weekend. Yeah. I came out on a Friday. Like, sentence done. Saturday, Sunday, something had happened on the streets, but I okay. went there, something happened in North London. Mm-hmm. And the police had um, come for me on a Monday and said, we thought you'd done it, or we think you might have been involved in it. But I literally don't, I'm from North West London, this is mm-hmm. Quay, North London, I don't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Put me back in jail again, I've done another, like, what, six, six. Not Cat D. Back, no, back, back, back in jail, because I've been in Cat D, so they've, they've, they've taken the Cat D away and put me in Elmley. From Stamford Hill, I've got Elmley close condition. Mm-hmm done my time in there, so right, my head's straight. I want to come out on a different path, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to stick to the music. Then after two days, you put me back in jail. Like, after two days of not doing anything, mm-hmm. I've turned up to probation just to, like, you know what I'm saying, have a word with the probation officer, and you've you jerked me, send me back to jail. And then, and then I've been there for, like, wait, what's that? Just, I say a couple months. So when I got out, obviously I made a complaint to get out. So when I come out of jail now, I had enough. I was like, you know what, I'm not sticking to nothing no more. Because I tried to go down the right path, but it seems like my past is going to keep haunting me, you know what I'm saying? Mm. I, just, I just thought, you know what, F all of this. Mm. And then I just kept, I just, just kept riding the wave, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And then got back on the music, started to take the music serious. I've done a track with um, Fecky. This was the track that made Fecky blow as well. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you know about him. He's an artist from London as well. What do you say to yourself that made you take it serious? Because we can't pass that milestone. That's a really important moment. Yeah, of course. And there's a lot of people listening that really want to know about that moment. Well, when I took music serious. When you took music serious, what did you tell yourself and then what did you do? Because you had to change your routine. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is the, this was what I was getting to. The, 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 when I started taking music serious again, Yeah. I've done a feature track with that guy, Fecky, I just said. And then mm-hmm. I end up in jail the day the music video dropped and the tune actually blew. That was his break, breakthrough moment. You know what I'm saying? But we was, we were like featured artists on the track as well. Mm-hmm. Not saying I was going to jump on his way, but it, whatever blew, they were asking, who's the other guy on the track? Where did you know that guy from? Because he made a track that was hot. You know what I'm saying? Everyone yeah. kind of knew, people knew who I was with or without the music yeah. before and after music, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But I end up in prison again. So this guy has blown. Like, we've done the feature track, I've seen you on the streets and whatnot. Now you just blown. I'm in the prison cell. Mm. I'm turning on my stereo, my set, and I'm listening to your music. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, where are you going with it? Are you going to keep going down the same lane? You're, on the, you're like on the fast lane, heading nowhere. You know what I'm saying? You're not going nowhere, you're just driving fast, you're not going nowhere. So I had to take time out and it's like, nah, pull back. And I came out of jail in 2014. That happened in like 2012. 
So I, I got another, I got another five year sentence again in 2012. So I had enough. I had enough, so I'd done two and a half years in jail and came out 2014, mid 2014. Yeah. But I had enough of jail. So that, when I got out, I thought, you know what? I might have missed my boat or the music. Let me just try it out. I've done a video. Everyone's back on it, you know what I'm saying? I was, I was like, yeah, cool, I'm sticking to this. And I started just keeping it going, keeping it going, keeping it going. Then like 2015. How hard is it? How hard is it? Because I know that it's, you know, I get a certain man talking to me and it's like, they're getting drawn out. Yeah. And they've still got their ego seen yeah. this. Because when you're from yeah. road, it's yeah. hard to get rid of your ego. You can't ego. let go, you can't. You're you so can't. attached to that you, reputation you are, but... that you can't let no one see you looking moist. Yeah, but you just got, you got to become one with yourself. You forget what other people, there's people, everyone's got their own perception, their own views of everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everyone's yeah. going to say something to you, but to does it, it matter? Let's get if you it. give me your opinion, say like you was going to, say you was going to go buy a car. I can tell you what's good and bad about the car, but once you get the car, it doesn't matter. It's your car, for one. It's going to get you from destination A to B. I'm going to be the person to give you an advice, oh, right, but I haven't got a car. So who am I to give you an opinion? So when you're chasing your dream, the other person ain't got a dream. That's why they're sitting there saying this and this and that. You just have to just go with it. The ego is going to be the ego. You just got to do what's right for you. This is what you realise when you're getting older, when you're maturing and that. You realise that sometimes what people say don't really matter because it's what you do. You know what I'm saying? Beautiful. And if you don't go with what you're thinking, what you do, or what you're doing, when you hit a brick wall, that's your fault. You can't blame someone else, oh, you told me to do that. Well, he only said it. He didn't put a knife to your neck and say, well, or a gun to your head and say, go do it right now. Mm -hmm. you, you listen to him, you know what I'm saying? So I'm hearing you saying yeah. that you took responsibility you have to. for the fact that you kept going yeah, in and I had out. To. You took responsibility for the fact that yes. you could waste in your career. I you was my whole, yeah, exactly, exactly. And then when I did go to jail in 2012, well, I forgot to mention, that's when my dad passed away. And because I was in remand, I couldn't get like a day release. Because you're on remand, you're still like a risk, a flight risk of like, escaping. Exactly. It was horrible. Imagine sitting in cell, getting a message, oh, your dad's passed away and you're just there. Oh, man. You know what I'm saying? So all these things affect you and then you can't, you, I felt the pain of my dad passing away and that, but it's like, you're a bit detached from what's going on because you're in prison and prison is a psychological mess up. It's a head, it's a head. Battleground? You know, it is. Because you're in jail, but I, you're in, I was in, um, when we were scrubs, yeah, mm -hmm. in West London. Yeah. So it's like 15, 15 minutes from my area now, maybe like 20 minutes max. That's right. But whilst you're within the walls, yeah, it feels like you're in another planet. Right. So whatever, so someone can tell you, um, I'm in Shepherd's Bush, I'm in White City, and Shepherd's Bush is literally behind White City, like mm -hmm. two seconds. But when the person tells you in Shepherd's Bush, you're thinking Shepherd's Bush, and Shepherd's Bush is like a long, far destination. Like, it takes you away from the reality of life, you know what I'm saying? It puts you into this box world. So when my dad's passed away, like, he's passed away, but I'm not present in life to understand that he's passed away, you know what I'm saying? I don't know how other people think about prison or see prison, like, but that's how I felt. I was like, oh yeah, he's passed away, like, but I can cry, but I'm not gonna feel nothing, I'm not there, I can't go. And when I found I couldn't go and that, like, it's like, I just had to shut, shut the whole world off, like, I didn't wanna hear nothing from nobody. And then I got shipped to a far out prison in Wayland in Norfolk, Nor Norwich or something like that. Dumping ground. If, if they got a bad record of you in jail, you're going there. You know what I'm saying? Instead of mm -hmm. lying to me, you're going to a good jail, but down to reception, I'm going all the way to Norwich. There's contact with your family, is like, you know, it's, it's crazy over there, minimal. You're living crazy. So it's just like, you know what? I just shut off from the whole world and that. And the only, only thing I had was my, my mind and think about what I want to do, you know what I'm saying? Wow, bro. What I want to do. I remember I was in, I was in a, this is an extra story, I was, in the, I was in the cell with a guy called Shaka. Yeah. Rest in peace to him, he passed away when he got out as well. But we used to sit down in the jailhouse and just like, speak about what, what we want to do and that. Mm. He was my padme, you know what I'm saying? So he got out and then he passed away like a couple months after. Was he able to try to try what he'd done or did he say What he said, in? what he, we spoke about in the cell was him not hanging around with his friends when he got out. And what did he do when he got out? He died in the car with the same people he said he didn't want to hang around with. My you know what I'm saying? Days, bro. His friend crashed the car. They all got up, but he died in it. You know what I'm saying? So I definitely said to myself, you know what? I'm actually thinking and doing what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I got out of jail. 
And I didn't care who thought, ah, oh, Biz, you're not dissing, you're not moving like. I said, bro, you know what it is, yeah? I always end up in problems. Like, anything could happen, you guys are gonna go home. I end up in jail. You know what I'm saying? I'm done with that. So whether you, whether you, whether you like me or you don't like me, like this is before Abba started taking music serious. This, this is when I took music serious. I lost a lot of, not I lost a lot of friends, I passed away, but I kind of like stay away from a lot of people and everyone, most people had things to say. Some people are like, ah, oh, rah, rah, you're not moving right, because rah, but I'm thinking in my head, bro, when I came out of jail, you didn't even think to say to me, here you go, you know what I'm saying? I never asked one for nothing. I'd always get it myself, but you didn't come on that approach. You're more interested in what, what, who I'm linking when I've come out. You, you ain't got nothing good for me, you know what I'm saying? So people are like, ah, oh, this and this and this and that. But then I said to myself, actions speaks in volume, you know what I'm saying? Talk is cheap, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If I carry on doing music, these guys that are talking rubbish are not gonna see me in the physical, but I'm gonna be everywhere. They're gonna hear me in the raves, they're gonna hear me in the clubs, they're gonna watch me on the TV, they're gonna watch their kids dancing to my music in that year. And I can I can name over about 100 people that I stopped talking to or stopped talking to me because they thought, oh, you're not coming around this, you're not coming around. I thought, listen, I'm looking after me, that's number one. So I started doing music now. <laughs> I'm doing my music. Uh, real lessons. Exactly. All of a sudden, these guys are all listening to my music now. But we was friends and we fell out. So now you can't say we're friends no more. Because now you've got a friend that's popping, doing music and whatnot. Everywhere you go, you're hearing the music, but you can't be present with me no more, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So I kind of learned myself and made myself understand that, listen, you just got to do what you need to do to make yourself and your family proud, you know what I'm saying? This was about letting go. Exactly, exactly. Letting go, detaching yourself from from the to the mindset, mentality, which meant I need to focus on me, on me, my vision, why I was made, what I'm doing here. Exactly, exactly. You you had power and influence. Powers, that's what I'm saying, yeah. Using that music. Exactly, exactly, 100%. Mm. And let's pursue that, and that's it, you know what I'm saying? So so did you give any thought to, um, or had you reached that stage yet where you thought, what I'm gonna put out, or at that stage, was it like, I'm just putting out whatever music oh, is in yeah. me? You just that's what put it was. It out. At the time, was, I'm just freestyling my whole yeah. life. Okay. It, it seemed like I had like a, um, a blueprint of what's going on. Yeah. It was just like, just going with it, going with the flow, just yeah, yeah. rolling with the punches and doing everything, you know what I'm saying? And then... Did it surprise you how just, things picked up? Yeah, it did, it did, it did, 100%. It did, I was like, I wasn't expecting that. I was on probation as well, so I had to keep lying that it weren't me. Yeah. And my probation officer's asking, who's that guy the police keep reporting that's making music? And you know they say, oh, it's gang-related music, but come on. I just, I just said to you, I have to stop dealing with certain people mm-hmm. to pursue a music career. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So how's that gang-related? Mm-hmm. What do you mean mm-hmm. gang guy? Am I killing anyone in the video? I'm making music. Yeah. Making people yeah. party and that, you yeah. know what I'm saying? How's yeah. that gang, you know what I'm saying? But I have to keep denying it weren't me, but keep pushing, you know what I'm saying? You have to do what you got to do, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And at the time, I never made a penny for music, but I was just putting money into the music, right, thinking, because right, I, I didn't, cause like I said, I was freestyling it. I didn't realise there was so much money behind it. I, and I remember I put out a record, yeah? And then I went to jail again. But I went to jail for something that was an allegation. Okay, yeah, but, I know that allegation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's a big, <laughs> big allegation. Yeah, but, to keep it real, bro. Yeah. Because like this is this is some real stuff. Real this journey, up. real life. Do you know what I mean? Remember, I hadn't I hadn't put got not not a penny out of music. Yeah, I was doing it, and showing cash money and doing this and doing that, like all these videos I was making. And then one time when I went, I remember um, before I went to jail, I had a conversation with a few people like you can make money from music, and I thought, yeah, maybe if I get booked for this or get booked for that, I make money. But one of my brothers had set up the whole um, system, mm-hmm. the pay system. I've gone to jail and I've come out. I was in jail for about what, maybe about six, seven months. Beat the case, obviously, you know what I'm saying? It was a yeah. serious charge. I beat that. Is it a murder charge? It was a murder charge, yeah, I beat that. How much, how did you feel during that Oh, process? no, it was, it's, it was in mind bugging. I, I was because you already decided, yeah, like, going down I, I'm not going down again. this road, so, so I, imagine me back yes, on there. it was crazy. And then at the time, I'd already like, set my life to a certain way where it's going a certain way, like, I'm telling you, I'm, I wasn't even eating at a regular like takeaway. I'm eating like, if I had to go somewhere, I'm eating in Harris, I'm eating here, I'm going to the big restaurants. Like, my whole lifestyle had changed okay. from so like. Did you make an error 
is there any part of it that you could take responsibility and say, yeah. maybe I shouldn't have gone here or linked this yeah, person me, or yeah. that? Yeah, I, I should have been more exclusive. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes when you're doing things and you're in the limelight and the music and all that stuff mm -hmm. gets a bit too much, the girls come with it, okay. the money comes with it, people jump on the bandwagon, so sometimes you get clouded by all these things, you know what I'm saying? It's smoke yeah. all over the place, you're not, not looking, and then something happens, and guess what happened? You get put in a situation again. It don't matter who you are, it don't matter where you've come, or how far you've come, you're back in a situation where it's like, I just left that situation years ago. Yeah. And thinking it was the other guys that were the problem. Okay. Now I've moved on again, yeah. and the same situation has reoccurred, now I can't blame it on them other guys. I... So it's not, it's you. I've mm -hmm. got to blame myself now, because mm -hmm. it's like, it's not them. Okay. It's not these lot. They're just rolling with it. These guys have never experienced this, so they, mm -hmm. obviously they're just like, you know what I'm saying? They're just yeah. going with the flow and that. You end up in a problem again, go back in square one. Wow. So it's like, you know what? This is it. Okay. I know what, I definitely know where I went wrong. So just tread, you know what I'm saying? So there was the danger of, firstly, it was being on the roads. Yes and just being involved in that. And then you came away, made a change, but then you had to learn new lessons, new lessons. about this industry. Yes. And how to function, how to, how to function. behave. Yes. You know, what could really get you in problems. Exactly. Because you could cast, you could do a simple thing, thinking this won't be a, won't be an no issue, one, but, but because you're in a whole different industry now with the lights on it you, is a, it's an issue. It's a bigger issue. You know what I'm saying? So you've got to learn those lessons. You've got to learn all now. those lessons, yeah. And then you've got a bigger reflection, or a bigger reflection to do, you know what I'm saying? I get you. School yourself more. Mm. You grow, you know what I'm saying? I didn't, I didn't have a manuscript. I didn't have no one teaching. I didn't have a mentor saying to me, do this and do that. I had to learn myself. Okay. So I had to go through certain situations okay. to make a better person from that. Why do you think that you actually got yourself in a situation where there's a murder charge after so many different things had happened? Why did I get myself in a situation where there was a murder charge? Yeah. You know what? Yeah, the, the, I was making provocative music for one. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. then people have an image or reputation that is given to you, or like the whole the perception of you. Mm. So when things happen, it was social media. I was kind of new to social media, so I didn't realize that social media was a big, it's a very it's a big deal. It's a big bro. deal. Yeah. So people are actually assuming what happened, okay. and, and the police went on assumption. Okay. Not factual evidence. They didn't ask me where I was, they didn't ask yeah. me what I was doing. Someone on the Twitter and someone said this and someone said that. Got you. The whole crowd is saying that, the whole, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So they just gone with it. Yeah, this will happen, this will happen. You're gone. I'm sitting in jail, okay. like, okay, okay. This is, what, this is how life is. You can't blame someone for thinking stuff. Mm -hmm. You can't blame social media for saying this about you. If you give people a story, they're going to run with it. If you make music that you kill a hundred people, they're gonna call you a killer. Mm -hmm. If you make music that you rob a hundred, you're gonna call you a robber. Mm -hmm. If you say you sleep with a hundred girls, they're gonna call you a playboy, you know what I'm saying? Yes. So you got you gotta know what you're giving out, the energy you put out is what people are gonna perceive, you know what I'm That's saying? That's correct. So you have to like know what you're doing, are you gonna hit it? The pro like you're gonna be positive in what you're doing. Yeah. Of course you can make music about certain things. Jay Z yeah. raps about drugs. Yeah. Jay Z can be with the president. Mm -hmm. Jay Z seen as a big influential person mm -hmm. in the black community, mm -hmm. and not only black community, the rap industry, yeah. and not only the rap industry, like the wealthiest people in the world, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But if you deep his lyrics, he might talk about doing this and doing that. Mm -hmm. Not that he's doing it, he incorporates it in what he's talking about, mm -hmm. but he does it in a clean manner. Mm -hmm. So are you gonna come positive on how you're doing it? Gotcha. Or are you gonna be that negative guy where it's like, you know what, I'm Scarface and, so C Biz, was yeah. it about you finding out who C Biz is? You have to. What kind of artist yeah. you want to be? What do I want to be? And yeah. not the guys that have influenced you yeah, growing up. Yeah, because yeah, I want to be the guy that I want to be. Beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not the guy that I was listening to. At the end of the day, the BG guy that I thought was one of my very, very, very favorite artists. Like, yeah. And when I, whilst I was in that jail center, like I came out in 2014, he ended up doing a stupid crime, ended up in jail. He's in jail right now. So he's had the same life story as me going to jail, coming out, going to jail. Now I look at him as an idiot. Like, shout out to BG, you're a good artist, but yeah. you had the world in your hand, in your palm, so mm. you, never made a, you never made another world out of it. Yeah. You gave it back to the, to the system. And plus, I, I suppose at some stage of our lives, we don't realise that we're actually leaving footprints. Exactly, we are. For those to look Trails, yes. behind and say, let me roll yes. with that, because you were rolling with his footprints. I rolled with his footprint, not realising he's just messing around. You know wow, what I'm saying? So dude. afterwards, you find what you're doing and that's it. So now, 
Finding you. Yes. So this is like to the present time now. Mm. And I'm doing what I want to do, how I want to do it. And just moving, you know what I'm saying? Who, who do you want to be? How, you know, who's CBiz? What, what kind of footprints do you want to leave behind? I've got to leave a great message or a great picture. I went to um, Apple, Apple Music. Yeah. And I had a conversation with someone, I'm not going to name him because I don't know if he wants to be, yeah. his name drops out. And he gave me, um, he, probably, he spoke to me mm-hmm. and, he, and he said to me, you're a very influential person. He goes, you might not, this is, like, he goes to me, you might not have the most following like other people mm-hmm. or do this and do that. And he goes to me, the other people being led by others, like these guys that you might see with like vast amount of followers than I have or certain things, he goes, they're with a label. So they either got a mentor or they got someone thinking for them. He goes to me, you've come up with your own stuff, you started ER on your own, you funded your own music, you fund your own videos, because you asked me who funded us, and I do. He goes, you fund your lifestyle, your music, your videos, and you're still alive, you're eating, whatnot. Do you do it exactly. So he goes to me, do you know who done something like that? And I goes, who? And he said, Jay-Z. Jay-Z and, and I was like, yeah, and he goes, do you know you can actually make yourself the Jay-Z of the UK? He goes, don't worry about anything. Before Jay-Z came, mm-hmm. he was trying to get his music heard. Mm-hmm. Tupac came, remember, two, Jay-Z was alive when there was Tupacs, when there was the Biggies, there was, mm-hmm. there was everybody. Mm-hmm. Everyone was making music, the Nas, who else, the Mob Deep. Jay-Z was alive, but mm-hmm. his music never got heard mm-hmm. as far as everybody's got to, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But when you look at the game right now, after the Tupac, the Biggie, the Nas, the everybody, where is, who stands the most? Who stands still? Jay Z is still the, mm-hmm. he's the top dog of everything. Yeah. He said to me, you can make yourself, not saying a Jay Z or Jay B, you can make yourself a similar person or similar character to that. Mm-hmm. So you need to think about what you want to do and like, don't entertain certain things that bring bad publicity. Like sometimes you got like, and it comes to maturity, like, you got like overlook certain things. You might be minding your own business and someone might say something about you. Right. You don't have to like rectify the situation. React. So you don't have to react. Yeah. Sometimes just let it go like, cause, cause- I'm sure you have to deal with Twitter warriors. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And these guys will come at you, but they ain't, not, they ain't got nothing to do. Nothing. Do you, if, 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 if you shoot them, you're brainless. Mm. If they shoot you, they're famous. Mm. So either way is a lose-lose situation for you. Like that. You know what I'm saying? Like that. So it's like, so it's like, are you gonna actually like, React to these guys? Mm-hmm. I don't even answer people because my, my word, saying? God's word told me that if a wise man and a fool is both arguing, you ain't gonna know you who's who. You never know who's who. So I let exactly, the fool talk, you know what I'm saying? So let, let the fool talk. See who the fool yeah, exactly. Is. So he I'm comes up with his. With exactly, exactly. And then you see he's the fool. Mm-hmm. But then I just thought, you know what? I'm gonna just chill out, do me, focus on what I'm doing. Yeah. Took a bit of time out, came back now. Yeah. Obviously, dropping like doing what, dropping my project, how I want to do it now. Mm-hmm. And incorporating my music with a bit of acting and like showing people it's not just about me coming up here and saying rah 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 I'll make this and that. It's about I've got a vision. Yeah. And I can make I can make anything out of nothing or make something out of nothing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. When we started, we were talking about it. Yes, exactly you know what I'm saying. Yeah, it's proof that we are made. We have mm-hmm. a great designer. Exactly. That we have a great creator. Exactly. Exactly. And 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 his mindset is placed in us. You can tell, it's like you said, you're like your dad, you inherit yes. it from your dad. Exactly. We inherit it from our designer and creator, exactly. our father in heaven. Exactly. He spoke and it was. it was. If you have an idea in your mind and you begin to speak it and act upon it, it becomes, it becomes a reality. Exactly. That was an idea. Exactly, that's what I'm Dr. saying. Dr. Prince show was in my head. And okay. Now, look. now we've got a production team, we've got people working on, we've got wonderful guests coming exactly. on. Exactly. It's a reality. It's a reality now. now. You know what I'm saying? And everyone has this gift a- ability and to do ability that. to do this. 100%. We need this training to override the prisoner to the streets training. Exactly. The school system training, yes, exactly. which tells you we're going to train you to get a job. No. No, my friend. No, that's You've a... already been gifted and it's exactly. inside of you. Exactly. I had a conversation with my friend about a job yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've got this rich white fella as my pal, Mr. Yeah. Harper. He owns loads of like houses in um, St. John's Woods and that. Yes. But obviously, he's born into that 
well for them, saying. Okay. But my, one of my boys came out of prison. Got work. He, yes, make exactly. It and one of my boys came out, but I met up with him yesterday, and yeah. he was talking about he's got his own plumbing company right, right now, yeah. as we speak here. Yeah? But he was re reflecting on that when he was talking to part, Mr. Harper. Mm -hmm. And he goes, um, he needs to get a job when he gets out. And, and the Harper guy goes to him, why do you need a job when you can do it yourself? He goes, sometimes you've got to grab the bull by the horns yeah, and just do what you want to do, you know what I'm saying? Excellent. And now he's got his own company, doing okay. what he wants, earning his own money. Look at that. You know what I'm saying? So just like that, he mm -hmm. just yeah. applying yourself yeah. and make, bring things to the And that's what private school does. Exactly. It helps you to understand that you are the elite. Yes. In society. You know what I'm saying? You're, here's, here's the work that you can yes, do. Yes, exactly. And we in public school are taught that you go and be the, nothing's wrong with these yeah, jobs, but come and work for this guy, yeah. work for that guy, do that. When you could have so much gifts in you and potential, but it will never be realized if you follow the system. Exactly. Way. And then they gave the JLB, you're just over broke, you don't realize, which is the truth. You're just over broke. That's right. You're not really like the elite, mm -hmm. where you're the master of what's going on. Mm -hmm. You're just working for somebody and, well, you I truly believe, you know, yeah. see, that's why we are called kings King, exactly. and queens, you know, and God is king of kings. Yeah, exactly. But his creation are oh, kings, kings yeah. and we must see ourselves in this powerful way. Because when you don't, like you didn't and I didn't at one point in our lives, what were we doing? I, just, I was just lost in it. Well, what were we doing, bruv? We were following that. like exactly. sheep. Following exactly. what was this one said, yeah, following yeah. what that one said, bothered about what you think exactly. about us. Ah, exactly. oh, I've got to show myself to be one of the man them. I've got to back it. Exactly. My ends, my postcode, yes. all of this and wasted. That's, that's when you mess up. Oh. That's why it all gets messed up. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I've seen loads of people throw their lives with them, like, over that. You've seen it, innit? Yeah, of course, 100%. Loads of times, times yeah. and times over. I could have been in the same situation, but thank God. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And now, I'm probably doing things, yeah? Like, people that I probably looked up to, mm. it's all, it's a reverse, it's in reverse now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Ah, it's in reverse. I remember, I, I remember coming out with people, or like, growing up, mm. and looking up to certain people, and they yeah. led, they led the whole movement, and this is where we're going, this is where we're going. And nowadays, I'm not saying this to make anyone feel bad or yeah. anything, because I, I hope they see it and just feel like I'm just giving my opinion, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? For example, yeah. if I had to go out with my older lot back in the days, mm -hmm. they'd probably like control, yo, we're going in through here, I pay for this, blah, blah, blah. But now they can do that and, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm the person in front. taking care of business. You know what I'm saying? I'm, that, right. that is what it is. Like, That's right. Okay, we're going in even a safer route. Yeah. Now we're safer, we're with security, we're safer. Like, nice. We're following my lead. I could have no just been doubt. like one of them sheeps. Yeah. Okay, we're still waiting for you to run the show. Mm -hmm. But now, nah, you know what? Sometimes someone else has got to drive a car, you know what I'm saying? Take and we've got to take charge. Yeah. And you might not feel, I'm not going to disrespect you because I'm yeah. doing it, I still respect you. Yeah. But just follow my way for a minute because obviously I'm trying to head somewhere with it. Mm -hmm. So if we go this way, it's safer, in that, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? We'll do that and we'll go, you know what I'm saying? So we're looking at olders. Like yeah. they're above us, yeah, and they're the ones to look up to. Yeah, when really Literally. your gift that you've got yeah. will put you in real leadership. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, when the older is going to be looking at you, yes. watching you on telly, listening to what you're doing. Exactly, you know what I'm saying. And then you're controlling, and you, you know, it's same yeah. as you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You might have grown up, whoever was watching you was probably thinking, but right now they think, oh my god, bro, listen, bro. like, like oh, they can't believe chance. it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But they can't believe it. Look, yeah. like. Look what he's doing. My lead changed the, le the lives of many of my friends. Exactly. Because they decided to change and stop shutting, stop, stop trapping the road. Exactly. Because they saw me coming on TV as the prospect of the year. Exactly. Right? This and that. So that like, if Prince can do that, of course, if he was on the corner yes, with us, yes. then bro, let yeah. me do me. Exactly. Real life example. Yeah. Let me do me. Let me pursue something. Mm. Let me be and be, let me be something. Powerful, man. You know what I'm saying? Let who, me do who are your Who are your role models now? Or who do you look up to? Or is it just CBiz that you're focusing on making a role model for others? Um, of course I focus on myself, but mm -hmm. you know, like, for my, my perception of things has changed. Yeah. So I wouldn't look, look up to, like, whatever, like, <laughs> sector of life I was looking up to before. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think, like, a road man is, like, a good role model. I hear you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because a road man's got two options, jail or death. 
I need that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if, if the kids watch this, they need to know that. Mm. If you end up in jail, they end up saying free you. And mm. what's free you to what free you? And that's it. Mm. Free him. That's free right. whoever. It doesn't cost to yeah. say that. But then it costs you to be in there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. RIP to him. Yeah, isn't it? RIP to him. You know what I'm saying? RIP t shirts, what? Couple quid. Couple quid, little down. 20 pound bottle down, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Not even the whole 20 pound, just a couple yeah. drops. Yeah. That's it, you're in the grave, your parents paying the price, mm. your family paying the price, literally you know what I'm saying? Paid it. Literally, literally. In more ways than literally. one, emotionally, emotionally, mentally, financially. Yeah, financially, all of it. Oh, you know what I'm saying? The price is the high. The price is high, so you need to, if, if you was a kid coming up and thinking about certain things, you need to try and understand and find yourself and ask yourself, not where do you want to go today? Mm. Where do you want to go in life? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where do you want to be? You know what I'm saying? Yes, King. Like, it's, life is not just about today. Mm. There's always a tomorrow and after, you know what I'm saying? Beautiful. And years and years after, is what, what you're doing today, is what you're doing today going to count? Mm. And if it doesn't count, why do it? There you go, man. You know what I'm saying? That's so powerful, man. I hope Beautiful. you take it the right way, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, let the youth know. They, 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 need, they need to know. Your vision for the future, just in wrapping up, um, is big because because um, you've got other aspirations now that's moved on from where it is. So we're see biz in five years time. Just break that down. See biz in five years yeah, time. Five years time. So I hope everything I'm doing right now. Yeah. Obviously, I, you you can only just from experience of me yeah. planning stuff and it not going right with, not yeah. not going right with, but things happening. Yeah. I can, just I can only say this is what I hope, God willing, yeah? Yeah, of course. It's just to be in the right place, yeah? I've got a daughter right now, yeah. she's just five years old, had about, what, five years ago and whatnot. Nice. I'm doing everything for her. And if I do have another child or whatnot, mm. I'm trying to set up their life. Well, I'm set, I'll set up, my funds go to my daughter, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So what I'm doing in the music is mm. for my daughter. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whatever I do, what I'm trying to do now, I hope is beneficial for someone else to look at my picture or look at my story and say, okay, yeah. I remember this guy being like, always in like the police list to becoming something. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Becoming something good, great. Something that people talk about. The other day I woke up and Michael Kaluka, the geezer, the, um, the black actor, Yeah from um, Get Out and all the big movies and mm, whatnot. Yeah, yeah. He had a speech for the um, Golden Globe Award or something. Mm-hmm. And the first person to give a shout out to was me. Yeah. But people are saying that to me. Oh, look, he shouted you yeah. But I took that a different way, like, oh my God, this guy could have, he could have bid up anybody. Mm-hmm. He could have said, shout out to Jay-Z, thank you for doing this or what. Mm-hmm. He said, thanks to C-Biz. And it made me know like, listen, I motivate people, or I've touched so many people in ways I don't know about and I didn't really know I was doing that. So now I'm aware of it, I can do it in a better way, you know what I'm saying? So even if I have to like, give a good example, set an example for the kids for the future, yeah. or the kids right now growing up, yeah. somewhere, somehow, I've got to be an influential body that does that for the people, you know what I'm saying? Excellent. You know so it's saying? more about what you become what, as a person. As a person, you know what I'm saying? More than what you've accumulated Cumul- financially. Exactly, exactly, you know what I'm saying? It's not yes, about your... Power. Not that, yeah, I just got this tomorrow, but no, yeah. this is what you can do. That's like, legacy. You know what I'm saying? C-biz. I hope it Beautiful, is for the people, man. you know what I'm saying? Thank, thank you. God bless you, my brother. Thank you for your God bless time, you, my brother. God bless for having me um, You've just been in the company of C-Biz. This is the Dr. Prince Show. Look forward to seeing you in the next episode. God bless you, man. Easy job. God bless you, man. Is that right? God bless you, man.